Fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. of unrest that followed the Civil War, a powerful secret organization called the Legion of the Black Arrow sprang up in the western United States. Its members were to be found everywhere, defying the law or using the law for their own purposes, working toward the ultimate goal of revolt and the foundation of a despotic empire. It was the masked rider of the plains who led the fight against this band of outlaws and traitors, and for once his great strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness were taxed to the utmost in the cause of democracy. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One Silver, on the trail of the black girl. Oh, Silver! Hey! The Lone Ranger and Tonto circled Majorville and picked up the Oberlin Trail to the east of the town. Then, as they swept to the top of a rise, a strange sight met their eyes. At the side of the trail, a sorrel mustang reared on his hind legs. The figure of a man lay prostrate on the ground. It seemed that the horse, turned outlaw, was trying to kill his master. The masked man and the Indian urged Silver and Scout to their greatest speed. Master boy, man's life is at stake. Uh, get him up, Scout. No, Toto. Not that. The horse isn't trying to kill him. He's trying to get away. That's how to see now. That right. Give me a hand here. We're coming. Hold on to those reins. <laughs> All right. You can let go now and get hold of his bridle. Thanks a lot. Steady there, boy, steady. Quiet down. You're all right now. They sure named him right when they called him Imp. You ever see such a temper? You have to expect it in these half-breed Mustangs from California. Well, what do you know? That's the first time anybody spotted where Imp came from, just but. Hey, wait a minute. You're masked. And you're a Pony Express rider, aren't you? I got a gun, mister. You aren't going to get away with... You lie still. That Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Uh. I beg your pardon, masked man. I should have guessed it from that white stallion. What are you doing there? Slipping a rope over him, snake. Ground hitch him, huh? No, I'll just make the other end fast to my saddle. Silver will make sure he behaves himself. Uh, your Mustang's thrown a shoe. So that's what happened. Uh, what do you mean? Well, he went down and I went over his head. But I managed to keep a hold of the reins. And I tried to stand up. I just couldn't. Well, uh, how about it, Tonto? Oh. Uh -huh. Ankle not broke. It only sprained. Well, if that's all, will you lift me into the saddle? I can't let a sprained ankle make me late. Oh, you let Tonto see left arm. Oh, that's all right. I just fell on it. It's a little sore. Well, you let Tonto see. No, no, there's nothing wrong with the arm. You aren't moving from where you are until Tonto has a look at it. All right, it's busted. But I don't need two arms. How far is it to your next station? It's only about five miles. The Two Sister Ranch. Brad Wilson's place? Yeah. Either one of his daughters can fix up my arm when I get there. Just the same. I think you'd better ride with me. I will lead your horse. That suits me. Long as I don't keep Larry waiting for the mail. Hello. Uh -huh. See if you can find the shoe the Mustang lost. Uh -huh. Hunter, do that. I'll lift you in the saddle, Johnny. Uh, say, I know I don't weigh an awful lot, but you're carrying me like I was a tumbleweed. Eddie Silver, up you go. Uh -huh. I 
Hang on to the pommel with your right hand. I got it. Ready, Silver. Hip. Ready, Tato? Uh, let me find the shoe. Here. Slip it in your saddlebag. I want to look at it when we reach the ranch. Uh, you give Tonto rope. Me lead him. Here you are. Come on, Silver. Get him on the scout. <laughs> At the Two Sister Ranch, Brad Wilson, his two daughters, June and Claire, and Larry Dunn, who rode the next pony to the east, were waiting outside the ranch house. Larry's Mustang was already saddled, and the boy looked at his watch and smiled. He's late. Let me see. One minute late now, and he isn't even in sight. I think your watch is fair. Oh, you just don't want Johnny to lose his bet. Paul's the one who's the judge. Uh, what's your watch say, Paul? Uh, he's still got five minutes, according to me. But if we don't see some dust at the top of the rise right now, he sure won't make it. Johnny's never been late. He will be this time. If he is, it's going to seem mighty funny to me. The first trip after he made the bet with you. And you were the one who suggested it, too. The first one who was late to pay the other one fifty dollars. I wouldn't be surprised if you did Claire. something. Oh, no, clear, honey. We know you like Johnny a lot. Maybe you're disappointed. But getting the mail through means just as much to Larry as it does to Johnny. He wouldn't do anything to interfere with that. I should hope not. Well, what do you think I could do? You've been waiting around here for the last three days. You took a ride to the west yesterday. Well, uh, I was looking for engine signs. Maybe you found some. And didn't say nothing about it? I don't know what you got on your mind, Claire. But I never thought a sister of mine would talk about a friend of the family like that. Like what? Like Larry might hire some renegades to ambush Johnny. Well, I'll be dogged. Is that what you're thinking? I didn't say so. Well, Johnny's a pal. Oh, I, I guess I'm just worried. I'm sorry. Hey, dust on the rise. There he is. Oh, thank goodness. I sure have to travel if he wants to make it now, though. I don't care if he loses as long as he stays. There's more than one horse, Brad. Yeah, three. Johnny's Mustang, a pink and white. Johnny isn't riding the imp. No, the white horse is carrying double. And look at him travel. A couple of minutes to go. He'll be here on time, Larry. Paul, oh, you know that white stallion. I can't see who's riding with Johnny. That's an engine on the paint. And look, just above Johnny's head. The mask. It's the Lone Ranger. Uh, something must have happened to the boy on the trail. The mask man, give him a lift. Come on, Silver. Get ready to ride, Larry. Bring it in, boy. Johnny. He couldn't keep up with those two horses if he was carrying anybody. Stand back, girls. We'll make a fast change. Oh, Hi, folks. Are you hurt? Oh, not much. The mail bag's on the imp. I got it. Anything in the way pocket for me? Nope. Slap it on your saddle, Larry. Right. Steady, boy. I'll be back in three days. Get up there, boy. Come on. Bye. Well, then, Johnny, slide down. Kino. Johnny, what's wrong with your arm? Hello, Claire. Oh, it's broke a little, that's all. Can you walk into the house? Sure. The ankle isn't so bad. Just lean on me. What happened? The imp lost his shoe. Then he took a tumble. Easy now, Johnny. Oh, I wish we had a doctor here. Hano can set the arm. Akimo Sabe. Uh -huh. Bring the horseshoe into the house with you. How to do that? What are you so interested in the horseshoe for? I may be wrong, Johnny, but somehow... Here, I'll carry you up the steps. Well, uh, somehow what, Mask Man? Somehow, I don't think your fall was an accident. <laughs> Johnny's arm was set and his ankle bandaged. Then he was left with the two girls, and the Lone Ranger and Tonto went out to the blacksmith shop in back of the ranch, where Brad welcomed their help in shooing the imp. It was necessary to throw the fiery Mustang, put a rope around each foot, and stake them out. Then Tonto had to sit on his head and the masked man on his body before Brad was able to trim the hoof and nail on a new shoe. At last, however, the job was finished, and the Mustang was turned into the corral. It's a mighty ticklish chore. Just can't be done any other way. It takes at least three men. How long has it been since the imp was shot? Oh, about six weeks. Slim and Shorty from the Bar X were here. They give me a hand. And the shoe he lost was put on less than a week ago. Oh, you're wrong, mister. Oh, here it is. Let's see. Well? Uh-huh. Well, it must have been Hank did it. I know I didn't. Hank? Hank who? Uh, Hank Meredith. He's got the station about 20 miles west of here. The first change on the way to Majorville. The imp is only used between here and Hank's place? That's right. Mighty funny. What is? Well, uh, Hank don't often have visitors, and he couldn't have done the job alone. We'll have to believe he found help somewhere. But uh, you haven't finished with that shoe. Heft it. Feel the way it's waiting. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bad job. No wonder the horse stumbled it. What's his? I thought you'd notice it sooner or later. Only three. How does he expect the shoe to stay on with only three? Perhaps he didn't. And I had a look at the M's hoof just after it lost the shoe. The job was so bad that it must have been deliberate. Deliberate? Brad, 
What happens if Johnny can't ride? I've been thinking about that. When Larry gets back from Osage, he'll have to ride over to Majorville. Johnny's got a substitute rider there called Bill Lacey, but there's no way to get word to him before he has uh, to... Do, uh, do you know this Bill Lacey? Never saw him in my life. Johnny's never been laid up before. Yeah, what do you know about Hank Meredith? Oh, nothing much. He sort of knew. I can't understand why they hired him if he can't do a better job of showing than this. Remember what I said, Brad. This might have been deliberate. A Pony Express rider depends on the station men to keep his mounts in good condition. Why, Johnny might have been killed. Exactly. Now, when does Larry get back with the mail from the east? Oh, three days. He won't have to ride all the way to Majorville. There's no other way. You don't expect me to leave here, do you? No, Brad. I don't know I'll carry the mail. But uh, before Larry gets back... Yeah, that'd be Wednesday. Uh, before Wednesday, we're going to ride over to Hank Meredith's station and have a talk with him. There are a number of questions I want him to answer. Steady, Silver. Oh, God, oh, God. We're too late, Hunter. Uh, the buildings have all been burned to the ground, and the horse is driven away. Isn't that right? May have been an Indian attack. Oh, uh, Tonto, not know. But whoever did this, they couldn't have hidden their trail. We'll pick it up and follow them. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Steady, boy. Oh, what is it, Kimosabe? You look at track. Many horse go that way to north. One horse go that way. Head west for Majorville. One horse wouldn't have left the cavy, the band of horses, without a rider. Isn't that right? Now, which trail we follow? We're following the cavy. To the north, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Trails leading down into the valley. Ah, this only way to get in valley. I know that, Tonto. Won't be long before we know who burned those buildings and drove off the horses. Maybe so. Rain up. Rain up. Oh, steady, boy, steady. Oh. Well, we can see the whole valley from here. Oh, no, it's not big. There are all the horses from the station. I'm taught to not see man anywhere. That's because there aren't any. And what you mean? Remember those tracks we saw back on the trail? The man who rode toward Majorville was the one who set fire to the station. Oh. And that man was Hank Meredith. Can we go after him? No, Kimosabe. Got to get back to the ranch in time to meet Larry. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. <laughs> Wednesday morning, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, Johnny, and the Wilsons were waiting for Larry to ride down the trail from the east. Johnny objected to the masked man's plan. I don't like it. It's too late to argue now. Here comes Larry. You'll be all right for the first stage, but what happens when you change horses? Our Mustangs aren't big enough for you and Tonto. We'll ride Silver and Scout all the way. I'm well enough to ride myself. That isn't true. You won't be ready for another two weeks. Hello, Larry! Howdy! Bring her in, boy! Hello, boy! Whoa, hold boy! Hey, you're right on time. What do you want me to do? Ride on to Majorville? Oh, why haven't you got fresh horse handled for me? Lone Ranger and Tony were taking Johnny's place. Let me get the mailbag on, Silver. Oh, wait. Oh, what's the matter? I got a note for you. Girl slipped it to me the other night in Osage. Here. Kimosabe, it's same writing. Yes, Tonto. An important message heading west on the next mail. The Black Arrow will try to get it. Black Arrow? And Tonto, Hank Meredith is a member of the gang. Steady, boy. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Through the rest of the day and the night that followed, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode toward Majorville. Without a change of mounts and avoiding those stations where they were not known, they kept on and on. But the great horse, Silver, and Scout were more than equal to the task. They reached the town at 4 o'clock in the morning and raced along the deserted main street to the express office. Well, there's no one around, Tonto. Uh, maybe somebody in office. We'll see. <coughs> Don't think we're late, Tuttle. Well, we travel plenty fast. Howdy, gents. What's on your minds? We're looking for Judd Carter, the Pony Express agent. Why, he's home in bed, but if I can... What the... Don't go for your gun. Your mask? Now, this isn't a holdup. We brought the mail through from the Two Sister Ranch. What's an outlaw doing carrying the mail? Judd Carter knows me. I'd rather explain to him. Judd knows you? Yes, sir. Uh, where can I find him? You don't have to do that, mister. I'm beginning to get it. A masked man and an engine riding a white horse in the paint. You're the Lone Ranger. That's right. Something's happened to Johnny, and you've taken his place. He has a broken arm and a twisted ankle. Well, uh, why isn't someone here to carry the mail on? Because you're four hours ahead of schedule, that's why. Grant won't be in from Platte City till 8 o'clock. That's when Johnny's do. They usually switch bags here and start back the way they came. Oh, I see. We were told that Johnny had a substitute rider here called uh, Bill Lacey. Sure, that's me. I'll take over for him. Well, if you don't mind, we'd rather turn the mail over to Judd Carter. I'll go and get him. There's, uh, there's something else we have to report. Uh, what's that? One of your stations has been burnt out. One of your men has disappeared. More trouble, huh? Which station? Who are you talking about? The one closest to the Wilson Ranch. Hank Meredith. Leapin' cactus! You wait right here. I'll get Judd. Hello. Uh. As soon as we report to Carter, we won't have to worry about the mail anymore. We have camp outside of town until Silver and Scott are rested. Then, well, then we'll go after Hank. You think maybe him here? He was heading this way. Wherever he is, we've got to find him. It was on the morning of the following day that Bill Lacey raced up to the Wilson Ranch. Larry was waiting. The mailbag was switched, and then when Larry had swung into the saddle and headed down the trail to the east, Johnny introduced Bill to the Wilson. Goodbye, Larry! Bill, this is Brad and Flair and June. Howdy. Howdy, Bill. I'm pleased to meet you. June, say howdy. Oh, howdy, Bill. I, uh, I'm sort of worried about Larry. Hey, <laughs> how come you never worry about me? Claire does enough of that for both of us. But I got a special reason. You remember what the masked man said about an important message from the East? Yeah. Well? Well, what about it? Well, it'll be in the mailbag on Larry's next trip. You heard him just as well as I did. He said the Black Arrow was after the message. What's the Black Arrow? I don't know. Some outlaw gang, I suppose. They might try to ambush Larry. Ah, uh, he can take care of himself. And even if he doesn't, the masked man knows what's going on. But he's in Majorville. Isn't he, Bill? To tell the truth, I don't know. We didn't see him after he delivered the mail. I guess he'd have to stay there for a while, though, to rest up his horse. You see, Johnny? I got a right to worry. And I'll keep right on until Larry goes up there Monday. <laughs> The following day, Bill Lacey rode away from the ranch. He told the Wilsons he wanted to look at the country. But from the way he followed the trails, it was soon apparent that he knew it well. Without any hesitation, he turned north at the creek and only reined up when he reached the sheltered valley where the Lone Ranger had seen the cavy of horses from Hank's station. The cavy was gone, but three men had made camp there. They jumped to their feet as Bill rode toward them. Don't get excited, boys. It's only Bill. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh ho there. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> I want to talk with you, Hank, alone. Sure thing. Take a ramble, boys. Bring some water from the spring. Where are your horses? Over here in the trees. What happened to the ones you drove off from the station? How should I know? They're half wild. They might be up in the mountains by now. You should have made sure they headed that way before you left them. Why? Because the Lone Ranger saw them here. Here in this valley? That's what he told Judd Carter. And he saw your tracks heading for Majorville. Now, there's nobody thinks engines wiped out that station. That means nobody's going to blame him when the mail is robbed. But if you tell him that... I won't. We've got to change our plan some. Yeah, why can't you tell him it was engines? When nobody else has seen any in this part of the country, you're loco. Yeah, we've got to get that package. You've got to get it. And you're not going to take it away from me. What do you mean? I get Johnny Hurt, you're taking his place, and now you want to double cross us. You're not going to take it away from me. Just get that straight. Got to make it a real holdup. I don't savvy. Larry, you fool. 
fixed up an ambush somewhere to the east of the ranch. Oh, yeah. He's due there just at daybreak on Monday. Keno, Bill. Now, don't let him get away. If he does, keep after him. Uh, there's no chance. But what if he does get to the ranch? And maybe I'll have to tip off my hand. The old ace in the hole, eh? We may need it. The Lone Ranger's in on this. He don't worry me, none. Listen, mister. If we could get both him and the package... You don't have to tell me. We'd be sitting pretty. We'd be on top of the heap. If you see him, shoot to kill. Early Monday morning, Larry was urging his mount along the trail to the east of the ranch. It was still dark, but a faint rim of gray in the sky behind him gave promise of the dawn. Suddenly, two horsemen rode out on the trail. Larry went for his gun. Don't shoot, Larry. It's a mess, man. Oh, oh, there. Whoa, boys. Oh, steady there. Ah, sure glad you called out, mess, man. I was going to let you have it. You're riding straight into an ambush, Larry. What's that? Hank Meredith and two other men are waiting for you on the trail up ahead. Hank Meredith? Yes. We found their camp, and then we followed them. You sure he's an outlaw? I'm positive. Well, thanks for the warning. If I can't outrun him, I'll outshoot him. I can't let you take the chance, Larry. Those papers you're carrying are more important than you can imagine. The dispatches from the London Admiralty for their Far Eastern fleet. From the London... You mean they're using the Pony Express? Yes, Larry. And Washington wants to make sure they get through safely. But all across the country, the engines and outlaws... It wouldn't make so much difference if the engines got them. Black Arrow's a different matter. I can't let you ride on. Well, you're not asking me to turn back. Not at all. Just cut away from the trail and make a big circle until you reach the ranch. What about you and Tonto? We'll see if we can handle Hank and his men. That's good enough for me. Get up there, boy! Here he comes. Yeah. You see, June, it was foolish of you to worry. No, it wasn't. He isn't following the regular trail, and he wouldn't have cut away from it if something hadn't happened. Maybe there was a washout someplace. In this weather? Hey, don't matter now. You want to sit to ride, Bill? Sure am. Then stand by. Bring her in, boy. Did you hear the shooting? Shooting? Did he say shooting? What are you talking about, son? Oh, they hold, hold, boy, hold. The Lone Ranger and Tano are trying to round up Hank Meredith, and the hombres has got working with him. They warned me about an ambush, so I circled to the north. This Black Arrow gang was after the mail, huh? I guess so. Maybe you can tell them about it afterwards. Get that bag onto my saddle, and I'll be hightailing it out of here. Nothing doing, Bill. Why not? I got stopped again. Just the other side of that rise. More outlaws? No, June. This time it was a girl. You remember the one who sent the note to the Lone Ranger? Of course. She told me not to let this bag out of my sight till I saw the mess man again. You're going to hold up the mail just because a girl told you to? That's right, mister. Oh, yeah? Well, I got something to say about that. You're all covered. Bill. Oh, that's it. You're a crook, too. I'm taking that mail back. It goes where it belongs, across my saddle. Now toss your guns over here, belts and all. Hurry up. You're in with Hank. Never mind the palaver. I want those belts. Let's have them. Come on there, Larry. He's right with me. But before I go, I'm going to make sure nobody follows me. You don't mean... A bullet through your paw's leg and one through Larry's. I guess Johnny's enough of a cripple now. I won't let you. Stand back, sister. You'll get it. Too. Get up there, you magic coyotes! Get up! All right, Hank, off your horse. Same goes for your men. The Lone Ranger got him, Claire. That man, your work isn't finished. Bill Lacey's the worst of the bunch. He's rode off with a mail. And he wounded both Larry and Pa before he left. Bill Lacey has a mail bag. That's right. I'm leaving these prisoners with you, Johnny. Just let me have a gun. Here you are. Hold them until we get back. Come on, Silver. Hit him up. Oh. Steady, Silver. Oh, he's got the top up. of the ridge, Kimosabe. We're on the right trail. We should be able to see him. Ah, you look down below. Yes, Tonto. Him come round turn. If we go straight down this bank, we'll be able to catch him. Trail narrow down there. Bank steep. It's plenty hard to stop. Silver can manage it. Over we go, boy. We'll catch him on the trail below. Brace yourself, boy. We're coming to the bottom. Look out, Lacey, shoot. You hit, you hit his gun. Don't let him get away. Use your rope. That does it. The game's up, Lacey. That mail's going through. Maybe a little late getting to Majorville, Johnny. Not so much. And if it hadn't been for you, this mailbag would never have got there. All right, Lacey. You ride in front. The rest of you follow him. 
Keep a close watch on them, Tyler. I'll try to do it. Get them up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Adios. Goodbye, masked man. Just think, Johnny. If it hadn't been for him, I... I know, Claire. I guess there's a lot of people in the West who've said just that. But none of them could mean it more than we do. Look at them ride. <laughs> you and your Pony Express riders. So there's nothing can touch you, huh? <laughs> well, shucks, Johnny. He's carrying the mail, isn't he? That sort of makes him an honorary rider, doesn't it? Uh, yes, Johnny. Only... Hmm? Only what? Oh, it's, it's hard to say. He's cleaned up the outlaws around here, so... So even if Pa and Larry and you are hurt, we feel safe. But him, I'll never feel that he's safe. He'll take those crooks to Majorville, but he won't stop there. He'll go on and on, fighting for justice, facing danger until he... Until he reaches the end of the trail. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.